And of course, the highlight for so many people here in this huge crowd at Sandown Park is for this one man, the five times champion of the world, Juan Manuel Fangio in the W196 Mercedes Benz. My goodness, <laughs> I'm really seeing that. It's like turning back the clock. The same Herbie Johnson helmet, the same goggles. He wanted to race in the short sleeve t shirt that he always raced in, but unfortunately, the regulations require that he wore long sleeves, such as the, the white coverall. He has a full FIA competition license, uh, which he's kept. So he is, uh, he is uh, as much of a full license holder as any driver here today. In very close to the start, the flag is up. They are racing, and I mean racing. This is not a demonstration, but this is a race. The fourth car, of course, is the Maserati 300S of Bob Jay. Another classic world car. Running through first, as one would expect, because Brabham's car should be the equal of Fangio. The equal of Fangio's car, of course. And the W196 going in underneath. Jack Brabham, <laughs> and the whole commentary team shook its fingers in a very Italian gesture to say, whoops, that was very, very close. I understand Fangio made it very clear that he has not come to do a demonstration drive, he has come to race. That's exactly right, there is very words. He was asked to come and do a demonstration drive, and he said, I will not demonstrate it, I will race it. That's what he's proceeding. Down through the S's. With Jack. Not giving him an easy time of it. Bill Patterson behind, starting to get all tweaked up in the Cooper, just like he did in the old days. Getting the car sideways everywhere. The Mazda being a little more graceful, because it is a little older. One of only two cars, such cars, in Australia, and one of only about eight in the world. But here we have it. Maestro through under the Dunlop Bridge for the first time. Cloud of cement smoke, cement dust from the previous accident. And you can listen to this sound, this marvellous desmodromic straight eight Mercedes Benz, three litres of fascinating car, technically so involved and so, so advanced for its time. And the red car wrapper goes underneath. And that incredible mechanical noise. lap of one minute and 30 seconds which is uh, very interesting and uh, may indicates that they'll be lapping at around about 120 when they get warmed up and drive as one would expect Graham the Repco Brabham is a little quicker in a straight line a little quicker through the corners well it's got the benefit of um, 10 years development it's uh, a lighter car nearly as powerful it's a lot more rubber on the ground smaller frontal area In itself, a, a period piece. When we look at the former 5,000 cars that were racing just a few minutes ago, the Brabham looks tiny, fragile, no wings, skinny wheels. Yes, in fact, they're using those old-fashioned tyres with treads on them on these cars, of course, because the modern tyres are so wide. And, and you've got to remember the grandstand. Every time they go past the grandstand, rises and falls through the the pits. The pits have stopped. They should be all back working on their cars for the Hang Ten race. And I don't think there's anybody in the pits doing any work on any car. They're all on the pit counter, watching this memorable moment. You watch the way Fangio's hands sort of stroke the wheel. There's none of this uh, long arm, one smooth movement. It's come around a little bit, baby, a little bit more, then off and off and uh, this enormous affinity with the machine. It's, it's amazing stuff to watch. What a beautiful turn. Down through the S's. He's not mucking about, is he? The maestro is not fooling around. He's really starting to make that car work. He gave, uh, he gave the car four laps when he first came here uh, during the week and another four yesterday. And they are the only laps he's driven in anger in this car, which he hasn't sat in for a couple of years at least. He's putting a wheel over the edge of the curb there. He's using all the road. And here goes the grandstand up again in applause. People are leaping up and down. The Argentinians waving. It's gone past. On the 
strike. There it is, a picture. Interior works of the Tide Machine. Very economical driver, I reckon. There's no waste of energy. Yes, no overcorrection. Graben would find plenty of car in front of him to slipstream, I don't think. <laughs> the frontal area in front of him. Back stage for the last time. Graben really on the tails of the silver aeronaut that heads up to Rothman for the last time to up to Rothman. They're passing and repassing. Jack gets, gets past at the most difficult part of the circuit, over the top of the hill at Rothman's Rise. And this is developing into a motor race, Graham. <laughs> they are really trying very hard. Head doesn't lean. Jack's, of course, the classic croucher, but Fangio is sitting up there right over the apex that time. Is it? So, where he's going to close the gap on the straight eye down, actually. There it is, there they are. Between them, they share eight world championships. Two unique men, two unique cars. Sandown Park. And there are the hardened, modern motor racing guys, the mechanics and the drivers themselves, all out of their cars, just to salute the maestro. And Jack Brabham, who is almost in the same category as the great man, and certainly the greatest Australian racing driver ever produced. Their fastest lap was 121.6, and that is... Uh, just over 20 seconds outside the lap record. And I think 20 they years outside. And 20 years outside. It is really something. Thank you.